Welcome back. This talk on our radar is InfiBeam Avenue. It's not, uh, you know, usually spoken about, but currently is uh, locked to the 20% upper circuit, and that's because it's received an in-principle nod from the Reserve Bank for payment aggregators license. What does this mean for the company, and what uh, the business prospects does it open up for them? We have Vishwash Patel, who's the executive director at the company, joining us now. Thanks a lot, Vishwas, for joining in. First up, you know, just wanted to understand uh, uh, how many companies apply for this license, how many of them get it, and once you get it, what does... Uh, you know, it do to your business. Uh, what's the opportunity that it opens up for you? So, uh, whatever I hear from the press, more than 150 plus companies did apply. And what has also come out in the press is that only uh, six or eight have got this license till now. Uh, uh, what this helps is that today, uh, in the payments business, uh, uh, today as a company, we can go across in the hinterland and you know deploy uh, payment infrastructure uh, payment systems uh, except online and offline merchants uh, and uh, this comes under the rbi purview now with this license so it's a it's a very coveted license and uh, what it helps the company is that uh, uh, today uh, if you see overall uh, india there's been too many growth enablers right now uh, in the technology sector there are 700 million internet users 600 million for smartphones and uh, they're the highest consuming data consuming uh, nature in the world uh, uh, 150 million shoppers in this thing but the acquiring base the merchant acquiring base today in the hinterland is still not there we have the uh, macro data we have the of... macro data about the potential in india what we wanted to understand is that your recent launch uh, tap pay, pay for merchants is that also rbi approved is it going to replace the traditional uh, pos machines and uh, how much incremental business can this aggregator license that you've gotten from the rbi bring you yes uh, the tap pay that you just mentioned it helps uh, it's a transformational technology that anybody with a simple uh, uh, android phone can turn it into a post terminal and any merchant across the country can start accepting payments so it's a transformative to that whole bulky uh, 200 dollar post terminal to a simple app download on a phone and convert it into a post terminal so the penetration uh, that can go into the hinterland wherever there is a 4g 5g connectivity across the country uh, it enables even the smallest of merchants a street vendor to accept all types of payment options, credit card, debit card, not just a QR code with UPI payments, but it also enables them to start uh, taking credit card, debit card by just tapping on the phone. So the TapPay solution is India's first, uh, uh, India's first pin on glass uh, certified solution. And this can really help accelerate the acceptance networks in the country. And that's, just, uh, that's why this license is a very important thing for the company. Uh, to give, uh, you know, all the power to acquire merchants across the country to transform so many sectors, uh, say education itself, like one million schools in four states are not accepting it. So anybody can start accepting it, tuition teachers can start accepting it, a smallest food cart in northeast, in a village in the northeast can start accepting it. So it's a very transformative and this license will surely help give uh, a lot more power and legitimacy to uh, grow this acceptance base in our country. Okay. Um, can you give us a sense in terms of what is the eventual platform that you want to provide? Uh, because now that you've, you know, you have tap pay plus uh, you've been approved by the RBI when it comes to being a payment aggregator, you do also, you're probably looking into entering other verticals as well, say into working capital and invoice discounting, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, so what happens so is that... Just give us what uh, are the other ancillary services that you've applied to for uh, when it comes to the Reserve Bank of India and what can we expect when it comes to a platform of services which you would be providing? Sure thing, uh, Ekta. What this helps is that once you have a license to the payments part, you add your platforms, which we are known to do platforms uh, for multiple businesses. Uh, we provide, uh, we do the entire platform for the government e-marketplace, GEM, uh, which does around a lakh crore a year. Uh, we we also have so many platforms for uh, platforms for smaller merchants, uh, for a bill payments and other things. So putting platforms and payments across the country, making it easier for the merchants to do online. And once we start ex uh, get empowering the smaller merchants in these villages and towns, these become, merchants become uh, bankable, credible, 
so what happens is that then the credit finance because india is credit stuff today uh, uh, if you see uh, the overall 47% of the credit inflow is still through informal channels so once this merchants start accepting online payments and become part of the formal economy all these other value added services down to the hinterland will go in today banks are just serving the overserved right the underserved which are there where there is a massive credit uptake and requirement that's yeah, where we, once this uh, first part of the payments is sorted then the uh, credit will also flow right we take your point we take your point vishwas just wanted to understand from a business standpoint understanding infi beams business you have three verticals there's the payment stack which has cc avenues etc then you have the platform stack and then the third one is the credit stack that you have um what exactly is the revenue breakup that you generate from all these three verticals what are the blended take rates for the company and at the same time for these three verticals say what is the take rate for payment what is the take rate for platform what is the take rate for credit if you could give us these numbers mangalam we are right now in a silent period and uh, i think our q2 uh, board results are announced on 4th of uh, november so won't be able to give much in point to this but on the past what we have already announced hmm. that is this right now so our take rates uh, in a payment business which is almost 80% from a platform 20% is a platform business the take rate is increasing quarter on quarter today uh, right now it is it's around uh, 6.9 bips and it's growing uh, and it's growing right now uh, there is also Uh, as more merchants and more transactions we already given guidance uh, of uh, of doing around 100 billion dollars of processing volume across our platform and payment business and that's growing very very fast and uh, uh, it will keep increasing more and more once we get out have got out of this covid period and more other businesses have coming online uh, are are coming back uh, to perform like travel uh, entertainment uh, hospitality and many others which were uh, down during the covid period the take rates and other things are definitely we going to we already given a positive guidelines we already announced that we are on a 100 billion dollar run rate by 2024 uh, so those take rates and the volumes will keep increasing as we add more and more merchants as we keep building more and more innovative solutions to go across and now with this uh, license being a very constraining the players that anybody cannot just come into the country and start operating uh, without this not so it gives us that additional uh power empowerment from the rbi to actually go out and mass deploy uh, in a very safe and a in a in a very growth oriented manner okay so you are positive about your net take rate rising despite competition increasing in the space and is it probably i know you have your silent period on but is the pace of the take rate going to rise as much as we've seen say coming in from FI uh, 22 to Q1 FI 23. You probably closed at around 5.2 in Q1 FI 23. It jumped to 6.9. So will that pace com- continue, or will there be some kind of stability or deceleration? Any uh, guidance in terms of the pace? Yes, the those take rates are going to. I just told you during COVID, most of our major verticals like airlines, hospitality, the entire OTA business and entire uh, uh, the entertainment business of cinemas, everything was down, right? And those are the big percentage block because travel accounts for forty two percent of the overall e commerce. Those all were down during COVID period. So now. those are coming back on steam we power close to 3000 hotels in the country uh, we do uh, more than 20 plus airlines uh, all those once those businesses start coming in and start performing more with the holiday season now uh, coming in uh, this thing definitely we expect uh, a better take rate and things we already given guidance uh, in our last q1 uh, results uh let's see after the q2 results yeah so just for the viewers uh, you know uh, information we'll reiterate that guidance you are targeting 16 to 1700 crore revenue this year with ebitda of 170 to 190 odd crores and net profit of 110 to 125 odd crores as well just a couple of questions before we let you go uh what's the kind of float that you generate with the kind of uh, volume that you trade i mean uh, do you get to keep the money for a shorter period of time for yourself before you pass it on are there any returns that you generate on it the float business uh, no but we don't look that as an income uh, okay. keep it with the rbi it's a rbi monitored nodal account and uh, we don't make money on that uh, float but it anyway it's a t plus 1 to t plus 3 settlement and uh, that's not the core focus area of the of the company 
to make interest out of that roading money. But our major option is in processing volumes and providing platforms and charging them for the platforms and then credit. So credit is the major focus now. Right, right. Uh, which we have so float is not your core business. And finally, from a shareholder perspective, you know, two things that really stand out. Promoter holding at 30% is low. It has declined over the last few quarters as well. Are you looking to increase the stake in the company? Secondly, I mean, you know, not repeating what took place in the past in 2018, there was an auditor, auditor issue, etc. But what that did is it took away all your institutional shareholding. So, you know, these two are red flags for investors looking at your company. Promoter shareholding low and decreasing. And no institutions, no notable domestic institutions holding stake in the company. What are you doing to uh, fix that? So I can't comment on the individual institutions coming in because I don't look at the SAM market. We are here to perform, to build a very large, profitable company. Uh, that's always been the focus of ours uh, right now. Uh, even if you have seen the last announcement in the last Q1, uh, we personally, I even mean, I personally are putting in uh, uh, my personal money into, uh, into uh, uh, subscribing into the warrants of the company because we are positive about the company that is there. So having said that, uh, past being the past, uh, right now, uh, if you've seen who people who understand this uh, business, it's all bank to bank to bank. The gem numbers that we process for the government marketplace of more than one lakh is, is visible on the gem website. Uh, anybody who knows IITKL, I personally am the chairman of the Payments Council of India. Uh, we've been doing profitable, consistent growth business from uh, last 22 years for me, at least in the CC Avenue payment gateway space, and uh, never had any kind of this thing, uh, what do you call, uh, from any card companies. Uh, we are very reputed, and uh, uh, the growth prospect that we have and what we do uh, is quite visible uh, to all the investing audience there. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Patel, we're going to leave it on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and speaking with us. So that's InfiBeam. The stock is up around 20-odd percent today on the back of that payment. I've